Another unpopular take from one of y'all. Michelle, you say Nebraska will be relevant again. Uh, Nebraska. Nebraska will be relevant again. Well, Nebraska is still relevant. Relevant in what context? Relevant as far as winning, being over 500. Relevant as being in a bowl game. Relevant as potentially pushing for one of those playoff spots. What do you mean by relevancy? Good question. Love that. I absolutely love that take. Now, full transparency, uh, we are big stands of Matt Rule on the show. We believe in the way that he does things, so we've been pretty... I like Matt Rule, too. He lost to Dion, Coach Prime, but his quarterback play that that game was not very good. Uh, that team was hot at the time, so riding a lot of momentum. But I do like Matt Rule. I think he's doing an amazing job recruiting also. Transparent about that. But you talk about being relevant. What What is relevance exactly? I think we got to define what that is. Is that national oh, I ain't even. Hey, bro, we said the same thing. Hey, man, me and Pakel, man, we got we to gotta, we gotta link up, man. We, if, he, if he ever come to Atlanta, he got, we got to link up. Championships, I probably would put the bar a little bit lower than national championship when it comes to relevance. I think relevance is making a bowl game. And the good folks in Lincoln, Nebraska, they have not enjoyed a bowl game since 2016. That was the last time the Cornhuskers played. I think this is the first video that I reacted to that I, I don't have any disagreements with, with Pakel right here. I, I, JD, I'm, hey, bro, you got me locked in 100%. I like it, bro. Let me literally say the same thing. In the bowl. So what I would say is, there's, it, it's been a drought now, right? We all understand. It's, it's been some time since Nebraska's been able to enjoy that kind of uh, a season. But even with that being said, Nebraska being relevant, I think, is on the up and up. And as much as you've lost momentum and it feels like you may not regain it, you have a person in-house right now running your football program who has experience in rebuilding things. Look at... Hey, say what you want about Matt Rule in the NFL... Uh, I think in college, I think he's going to, I think he's probably going to have a lot more success here than he had in the NFL. I think what, what was it with the Giants, but um, you're going to be fine. He has some star power to him being from a college to NFL to college guy. And, you know, Nick Saban did the college to NFL to college guy. Not saying he's going to be Nick Saban. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, college to NFL, college guy. Back to the NFL. I'm not saying he's going to be Jim Harbaugh. I'm just saying. Temple, look at Baylor. Those situations, even though it may not feel like it by where you are right now, those situations were far worse off than Nebraska was this past season. Nebraska is close. And it feels like Nebraska's cursed. It feels like they're snake bitten because of how many one-score losses they've had over the last couple of years. And I get that. I, I, I hear you. I feel that. But is it more likely that Nebraska's cursed? Or is it more likely that you have a new head coach who is trying to get this team up to speed culturally and for their standards to win football games. I think it's probably the latter. I don't think Nebraska's actually cursed. And also I would say in terms of an arrow pointing up on a certain operation, from what I can gather about Nebraska, landing one of the top quarterbacks in the country in Dylan Riola. Pause. The top quarterback in 2024. I'm just saying, you want the best thrower of the football in this class? It's Dylan. And I'm mad he flipped on George, but I just got to be honest. I don't watch pretty much the top 10 quarterbacks, all top 10. And in my humble opinion, Dylan Riola is the best pure passer of the ball. He has the most uh, behind, he has the most uh, intangibles. He ain't the, I mean, is he a, a speedster and going to run you over or juke you or anything like that down the field? No. But I don't want him to do that. I want you to throw the ball down the field. That's all I want. That's all. Hey, listen, man. Dylan Rose is the number one quarterback in 2024, and I am so, so happy that he dropped in the rankings. At first, y'all saw my video. I was upset. I said, how, how, D, how DJ, and I like DJ, but how he jump over Dylan? You know, but and we, as we all know, if you go back and look at, look at the history of all these ranking websites, these composites, the top guys are rarely ever the top guys. When you go back and look at these classes two, three, four years from now, the number one guy wasn't that good. So 
I appreciate y'all. Y'all just y'all just y'all just validated one hundred percent to me that Dylan Riola is the best quarterback in this class because rarely is a number one guy the number one guy. So that's an arrow pointing up. Bring back your defensive coordinator who could have, just let's, let's be real, he probably could have gone and taken a head coaching job somewhere else if he had wanted to. I think he was ready for that. I think he had offers to do that. He decided to come back to Nebraska and be the D.C. That allowed 18 points a game last year. Arrow pointing up. You have a head coach. Ooh, well, I'm, me and J.D. on the same wave went today, bro. Y'all, hey, man, we, y'all got to be proud, man. We on the same page, man. I like this. Who is familiar, like I said, with rebuilds. Now, I say rebuilds. He's not just turning around in one season. We see this with Matt Rule more often than not. The first year is what it is. The second year, you get to relevancy right around that seven win mark is probably what you can expect. And the third year is when you really have to pop your compete for some exciting things. I'm not promising anything in that third year, but I am saying where you are year one, given Matt Rule's track record, is the jumping off point. I said if Dylan Riola, which I believe he will and should get the, I ain't going to say he should, because what, what you do in high school. Don't mean a lick in college. But if Dylan Rayola is what I believe him to be, and I believe him to be that, he's going to come in this spring if he's, if he's enrolled and pick up that offense because he's played in three different offenses in three different years in high school. So picking up a playbook ain't an issue for him. All right? So he's going to come in, pick up that playbook in the spring, get to marinate on that playbook in the offseason over the summer, work out his, with his receivers, get ready for the summer camp and our fall camp, my bad, and get ready for that season. And he's going to be that star. He's going to make some bumps. He's going to hit, he's going to, he's going to stumble during his freshman year if he gets to start. He's going to make some mistakes. He's going to make some errors. He's got to adjust to the new level in the competition. But on year two, year two, we're talking potential Heisman watch. We're talking Nebraska in the, uh, the playoff conversation. We're talking Nebraska – uh, bowl game again, potentially, especially they get the seven, eight wins this year. Dylan, year three, I'm telling y'all right now. And Pakel, he, he, I think I say, I'm saying in there. Pakel is saying he is knocking this out the park. He is really knocking this out the park. He can't, I can't promise you, I promise you it because I don't care. This is my platform. I can do what I want. <laughs> say what I want. I can make whoever I want mad. But, I'm telling y'all right now, Dylan Riola year two or year three in this program, Dylan, Dylan Riola year two, Nebraska year three under Matt Rule, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year for you guys. I'm telling you. And this coming from a Georgia fan now who was mad that Dylan flipped, but I can't deny the talent. I will not deny the talent. I will not drop his value because he went to another school like some of these other websites do. We ain't doing that. You are who you are. Talent does not have a location. Talent travels. Wherever you put that talent, it's going to play. And Dylan, Dylan going to get you there. I'm telling you. At Temple, his first year, they won like one or two games. At Baylor, I believe they only won one game. Now, his third year at Baylor, they competed for the Big 12 title. His second year there, they won a bowl game. So all that has to be said, you have someone who has a blueprint for the path forward. And I think by nature of how they're, they're attacking at the talent acquisition side of things, that would encourage me. That would really encourage me. Now, again, relevance is the key word here. We're not talking about winning Big Ten championships yet. We're not talking about winning national championships yet. That may. I'm not talking about they're going to do that this year. Next year, year three, year two for Dylan. Yeah, sign me up. I'm telling y'all now, they're going to win more games. They're going to, what, they went five and, five and seven this year. Dylan going to at least get you two more Ws. At least get you two more. At least. You gonna at least throw for it. You gonna double. You gonna double up in your passing game. I think you average. I think Nebraska averaged like one thirty four game in passing. Dylan gonna at least get you two forty first year, two fifty. Then they had like six seventeen pass. I don't know. I don't know the passing touchdowns, but I think they had like seventeen or twenty five. I think they had seventeen passing touchdowns or something like that. And Dylan gonna at least get you 24, 25. So you you already got an instant upgrade at on the offense side of the ball. Your defense gonna be good. You was on like one or two score, one score behind most games that you lost. I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling you what I know. Dylan Riola is the guy. He's the guy. He is him. It very well be on the horizon for Nebraska. Far be it for me to predict the future and tell you what your ceiling is under Matt Rule. When we talk about relevance, who's to say it can't be next year? They went five and seven this year. Oh, see, we on the same page, bro. Hey, man, me and Pekel, we, hey, bro, we, 
We, we finally getting along, man. That's what's up, man. I'm, I'm rocking with you now. We rocking. And the way they finished the season with one score loss after one score loss, that's enough to make you feel cursed. But really, I think if you look at a glass half full, you're that close. And you're tired of people like me sitting behind a microphone and telling you how close you are. When you look at Matt Rule in his first year, this is not someone who's just continuing to run their head into a wall. You can say that about the Scott Frost era. You can say that, hey, it was going a certain direction. We weren't getting where we wanted to go. We were tired of the one score losses. How, how long until we just say, okay, this is what it is. At, at Nebraska with Matt Rule right now, this was his first year. It was a jumping off point. This is a guy who's not going to run his head into a wall. They're going to adapt. They're going to build. That's what he does. So Nebraska being relevant again, I think it's not unpopular in the slightest. And when we sit down and do our predictions for the preseason here, uh, I would have a very difficult time saying we're going to put Nebraska below 6-6. Six and six. Now, we have to look at the path forward first, have to look at the schedule, but uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe that Nebraska is going to be in that six-win range the second season for Nebraska. Now, a lot of that obviously starts and ends with Dylan Riola and his progress and Nebraska's ability to protect him, but again, the arrow, from what I can tell, is pointing up, and the arrow pointing up from a 5-7 and seven season, I believe, is a very, very good sign. Had a... Hey. Hey, Pakel, hey, man, you knocked this out the park, man. You know, I usually get on here and be talking some stuff, man, but I respect what you do. I think it's probably the best take that I'd agree. I mean, like I said, I ain't got to agree. We all got different opinions, and I, I respect everybody's opinion. But, man, did we see eye to eye on Dylan Riola and Nebraska's potential upside this year? And, boy, don't even get me started on what I think Dylan could be doing in year two and year three of Matt Rule. Like, dude, like, it's, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 